hello John, um, this is not quite how I usually speak to people, but you have been included in this playlist because this playlist is basically about correcting a blind spot. Now as you are aware, I was very very badly impacted by austerity because of a variety of circumstances and through this period, as the other videos have outlined, I have spent my time establishing who was aware of the rule of law which austerity undermined for me and people like me and it's been a very tricky year because I always knew, as you are aware, that the systems I'm concerned with, our safeguarding systems and our cash transfer system, that they're always subject to consensus and that consensus has shifted and it feels like it's shifted for one for lots of reasons but actually if you read the if you watch the first playlist that will talk about the inst how the changes to family structure and women's roles have actually shaped these institutions and if you look you'll find that actually a lot of this crisis is about us being forced to recognize these changes now since 2010 you have seen me being abused relentlessly for discussing political consensus on these issues because the Labour left were injured by um, somebody they thought was a grateful prole, knowing more than they did and knowing they were full of shit. And the process that I was always watching, I was never really interested in winning a battle, I was just interested in the process by which we would go from the point where we were not meeting those dues in the rule of law, and then I wanted to see how big the instability would get and how we would get back to a point where we were meeting the rule of law again because I knew that process would largely go through. It's taken a lot longer than I thought. I had anticipated the, the left stuff taking two, three years. I didn't understand the dynamics of that and I'm very interested in the dynamics of that. So I wanted you to understand that one of the crises that you're seeing playing around you is the one where um, women are now being threatened and intimidated and abused and being told they're anti-trans if they discuss austerity and if they discuss these systems and if they discuss the inequality that they live. And it's actually that crisis that led me to make this video playlist because at the minute I'm putting on a group in Leeds where I'm getting women from all over the country contacting me because they've been meeting in secret because they're scared. I am... I can't believe the consequences of Labour putting me on that list of transphobes. This is months and months and months down the line and it has just had horrific impact. I don't even know how to. I've had to go and see my local MP about it and say this level of abuse and harassment from a political party has to stop. The reason the left hate me, John, is because they have a legacy identity that they've managed to keep hold of because of elite social closure and the emergence, the emergence of a policy and media making cult, a media culture. And what they've been playing out on Twitter for the last eight years is the tension between their function and their identity. And it used to come out in policy and media narratives and now it's coming out in abusive behaviour. And they'll just keep going around in circles. They, ca they can't really get elected, although we're so unstable at the moment as a country that the risk that they pose is so great. So that's why women are having to kind of step up. Now, their identity was injured by me saying, actually, you're not my representation. So that's really useful for you to know. And what they have demonstrated over the last eight years is how they have been a protective seal to the neoliberal consensus since about 1983. Now all the system development I'm talking about in that first playlist, the majority of the really good stuff happened since 1983. And the people who should have communicated that around the time that austerity was starting was our trade unions, but the likes of Dave Prentice, you know, and Len McCloskey, they're not, they have no idea what these systems do. So that crisis is still going to play out. Now I'm going to tell you something that I've known for quite a while. This crisis ends with those trade unions representing the service users that I'm discussing. That's part of a natural correction. It's looking highly likely the Labour left will just keep drilling up crisis. So what I've done is I've put these videos together because the problem that we've now got is the crisis that you've all generated between you to avoid looking at our key structural problems in our economy has pushed us to Brexit. And whether or not we can get a second referendum, whether or not it can be backed out of, the damage is done. We've just blown a reputation for stability, which we have built up over hundreds and hundreds of years, and we've just blown it like it was nothing. So even if we can get a second referendum, we have done that. 
it's very unlikely that I, we might get a second referendum, but we've damaged the relations that kept us stable. And even if we hadn't done that, we haven't faced up to the reality of our position in the world. We haven't faced up to increasing tensions between the US and Europe. We haven't faced up to the fact that world power is realigning. And we have now just basically approached Brexit like a litigant in person dressed like dressed in a Spider-Man suit, pissing on a plump, pissing on a plump pot on the way out. So the test now for Brexit is not about a second referendum. It's about how stable the country can be. Now currently, our political system is using Twitter to tell the world that we are a basket case and we are not. Most of the institutions that I'm talking about are still functioning even after eight years of um, attacks through austerity and erosion and even after 30 years of erosion by reflex. They're still functioning. Our economy is still functioning. Everything is still functioning. Our society is still functioning. Every minute that Twitter and our political system behave the way they do, visibly, to the rest of the world, is just years off our economic future. We are, we cannot afford what you are doing. And so I am bypassing that. The left have proved that they are a very, very effective barrier to change, and I am proving that they can be bypassed. Now, in the eight years where the policy platform that was subject to consensus and the left tried to help deliver, which was to undermine the rule of law for women like me as a consensus. Through that period, I made sure that I wrote for the left and the right of the national press. I made sure I was shortlisted for the Orwell Prize. Then, as soon as the LSE were ready for a multidimensional understanding of inequality, I went there. I obtained my master's degree, developed very good relationship. They're very receptive to what I'm saying. If you look at the videos that went before, the ones aimed at Mike Savage and John Hills, I've just managed to correct that blind spot directly with them. So I am telling you that your key tasks during Brexit are going to be finding a way to generate, to maintain stability. And unfortunately, we have a lot of crises that are coming. And you are going to have to learn from crisis. You are going to have to, in order to maintain stability, we are going to have to now use crisis. And in order to use crisis, we're going to have to be able to see them and to take responsibility for them. And what Labour are going, what you lot are going to have to do is you're going to have to look at the left and you're going to have to say, they were the protective seal that you have been using since 1983 to hide you from the information that's in that first playlist. And to realise that they have done us all a favour. Now, in the last, in that um, benefits, in that last Labour manifesto, they upheld those benefit cuts, which means that they have just demonstrated that they have upheld the neoliberal consensus, that they were a key component in doing so, and that they, that they were a primary barrier in allowing us to move past it. And you need to know that, because what I'm talking about is the context changing around systems and then crisis as we catch up, and I think you'll find that that is the epitome of Blairism. And I think you'll find, if you go and read Edmund Burke, respecting the natural evolution of the rule of the law, of the rule of law is Burkean conservatism. Although, don't listen to him, I'm beginning to think he's wrong. Um, the centre position is going to present to you, but it's going to be about addressing the system failure generated in the last eight years. And through the opportunity, through the crisis that are presented to you, you will have the chance to rectify problems, things that we didn't know. You will have the chance to develop new systems. And within those crises, that will be the only opportunity for the UK to come out of this situation with any stability. All the systems that I'm talking about are about stability. They're about labour that cannot be abdicated. They're about things that are constant. They're about things that are always the case. And what you are going to find, if you go back through your emails, to that email just before we met for lunch, before Brexit, you will find I was talking about inequality and instability then. We should now be coming to a point, I think, within the next year or so, where you'll be able to look at that email and, and understand exactly what I meant and crisis are going to push us there. But I want you to understand that the left are really easy to bypass because I have just done that for you.
and you have to stop fighting the left and you have to understand that they are like a cold sore and you have to fix the patient and it's actually the changes in playlist one that underpin austerity and it's actually the political crisis and the institutional crisis that austerity have generated as well as brexit that are going to allow you to develop you know we're going to be developing a new age but it's going to be the difference between this country flying off a cliff and being balkanized and being utterly fucked and this country going through a period of crisis and adjusting with a new identity. And I wanted to let you know by video that the left are very easy to bypass now. And that should make your job a lot easier. And I wanted you to also know that everything in this video is actually the centre position. And none of it can be done by just one party. It all has to be parties working together. So the Conservatives and Labour and all the other parties, now you've all managed to uphold a consensus for 30 years where you've been battering out at women like me, you're still playing it out on Twitter, so you've managed to work together on that. So now you can work together on this. 